Hello, this is Arnaud de la Fouchardère from Lyon. Uh, in this video, which is going to be the first part of a series of five videos, I am going to introduce the basics of immunohistochemistry and melanocytic proliferations. The study of the immunophenotype, which means the expression of proteins by the tumor, is really central in the integrative diagnosis of melanocytic proliferations. Immunohistochemistry is a complex tool and it's going to be about choosing the adapted antibody for your selected task. Among the different types of antibodies, we have melanocytic antibodies that recognize, recognize the melanocytes with some variety and the specificity and sensitivity. Here's a list of the most commonly used antibodies and here an example of HMB45 showing the dendritic uh, melanocytes here in the epidermis. And here's uh, adapted from my friend Lori Lowe, the, the variation and sensitivity as we see S100 protein is the most sensitive antibody to recognize melanocytes and HMB45 is going to be the most specific antibody. Secondly, we have uh, uh, in, the, in the setting of molecular pathology, uh, some anomaly specific antibodies. Uh, here, for example, is NTRAC1 a specific antibody in a Spitz tumor. Here is a partial list of some of the antibodies that can be used in this setting. They will be detailed in another video. Otherwise, there are some antibodies that are used to do differential diagnosis or, for example, to assess uh, intravascular um, expansion of the melanocytes. So what's really important, first of all, is how you have to know your antibodies, which means you have to be uh, knowledgeable of which cellular compartment is supposed to be stained. Sometimes it's going to be the cytoplasm, like here on this BRAF V600E specific antibody. Otherwise, it can be the nuclei with, with also a, sm uh, a small cytoplasmic stain for SOX10. Um, the cell membrane in the nuclei and the cytoplasm can all three be involved in this beta-catenin stain. Sometimes you will be looking for a nuclear loss, for example, for BAP1 here in this nest, all the nuclei have lost the BAP1 uh, expression with controls, of course, here in, in the epidermis. Another expression is cytoplasmic loss. You're going to look for PRKA R1 alpha uh, loss here in this antibody uh, which is quite specific of pigmented epithelioid melanocytomas. Uh, also, you have to know the type of staining. For example, for HAB45, you're going to expect this very granular uh, type of stain. Otherwise, it can be a diffuse positivity, for example, here for ALK in this plexiform spitz. And in some cases, you will have a weak intensity, but will you have a completely negative background, and this is usually what you will have for, for example, this NRAS Q61R. You don't need more uh, staining than this to call the case positive. And uh, for example, for BRAF v e usually you will have some degree of background positivity, and you really expect your cells to be strongly positive uh, in the cytoplasm to be uh, retained as a positive stain. Here are some different types of pattern. You can have a diffuse positivity in all the cells. There can be a top heavy gradient or uh, uh, on the opposite, an, an inverted gradient, which is a bottom heavy gradient. And you can have uh, a mix of positive and negative cells that can be called mosaic or checkerboard uh, type of pattern. And, of, and uh, lastly, you can have a heterogeneous pattern uh, in the cells. And some, uh, some of the patterns can be uh, specific for some um, entities. For example, uh, you, if you have a diffuse instead of a top-heavy HMB45 stain, this is something that is expected in a cellular blue nevus or in a deep penetrating nevus. Uh, another example is the loss of X, S100 expression in the blue nevus group. Uh, another important thing is you have to know your internal controls, especially if you're expecting to assess 
a complete loss of some of the expression. Here you have the checkerboard positivity of P16 and a nice internal control in the pars recta of the sweat glands. The NTRAC1 can, can have this golden dot uh, control staining that it will be found not only in the epidermis, but also in vascular structures as well as negative melanocytes. Another uh, thing you need to know is that the thresholds you're going to use, these are, these are the ones that, that I use, for example, for proliferation index that can be assessed by K67 or MIB1. And uh, usually thresholds will be 5, 10, and 20%. Usually above 20% is what you will find in a melanoma. For P53, uh, the thresholds I use are uh, less than 5, between uh, 5 and 50, and over 50 uh, in the dermal melanocytes. This will be some, and uh, uh, this type of strong positivity will, uh, will be suggestive of a melanoma. And lastly, you need to be a critic about your technique and you do not want to interpret your IHG at all costs. So sometimes the region of interest is missing because there has been too many recuts or it is, has been scratched by uh, the technician uh, according to Murphy's law. Also, there can be some technical imperfections. Uh, some uh, times you, uh, you can use some double staining uh, one, one of the most frequent examples is P667 melan A, where you have a cytoplasmic stain of melan A in red and a nuclear stain in brown for the proliferation index. So here's an example. Uh, you have this mix of uh, melanocytes and lymphocytes, and you have some trouble accessing the proliferation index. Here you can clearly see that uh, most of the uh, melan A positive cells do not have a stained nuclei, and all the stained nuclei do not have a surrounded, surrounding uh, positive cytoplasm. So these are mainly inflammatory cells that are uh, in the cell cycle, and there is no real uh, melanocytic proliferation in this case. Another important uh, aspect is the choice to use a red chromogene. This will help you distinguish cells that are positive and cells that have uh, melanin pigment like melanophages. So why perform IHC? We will see this uh, more detailed in future videos. There are four reasons to confirm melanocytic lineage, to visualize the melanocytes, to try to assess benign and malignant cases, and lastly, to perform molecular characterization. I hope you have enjoyed this video and you can subscribe to be informed of the future updates and the four next parts uh, on this immunohistochemistry uh, studies in melanocytic tumors.